Hello everybody, good morning. Today I'm gonna to show you the ease of installing a slack adjuster pretty much on a drop trailer. Show you how to cage the brake off, remove slack adjuster, put it back in, put it in proper adjustment. So I'm gonna give you a run through of what tools I use just so if you're doing it, you can use the same tools as well. Quite a simple process. What I use here is a couple of adjustable hammers. There's the slack adjuster I'm using, self-adjusting style, made in USA, believe it or not. Seven uh, sixteenths adjuster. And when you get done, don't forget to grease it. Uh, that use the impact to cage off the brake pod. Makes for ease of adjustment. Uh, the wrench pack from the Hobo Freight. Use the uh, snap ring pliers to pull off the outer snap ring. And luckily I grease these trailers on a regular basis, so this should be a go off without a hitch. And then you also have your channel locks to pull the pins and the car keys out. So let's get to it. First thing we're gonna do here, remove the dust cover. Uh, some of them could be a pair like so. One o'clock is where your cage bolt goes. Push it up just a little more. Spin it to the right. I should have grabbed the channel locks for this part. There we go. And you pull it tight. What you're doing is releasing the pod without air pressure so that your brake is actually let free. Take the old impact. Make sure you got a good battery. That will help. Then while everything's together, what I'm gonna do is break these two loose. It's the easiest point to do it. So might as well get it done now, right? Get an adjustable hammer on one side. Another adjustable hammer. And just loosen it up while you're here. Because if you get the slack adjuster loose, you're just gonna tie it with it. And they're not always the tightest, but yeah, just back off your adjuster nut. So once you have these loose and this drop down and this out of the way, you can just thread it off. It makes it a whole lot easier. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my car keys. And pins. Most of the time you have to actually loosen this up to get this main pin out. I'm going to back off slack adjuster to remove the pin. Make life a little easier on myself. Just like that. Now I'm going to loosen this slack adjuster just to give you some room. And if you can't tell, she's slightly wore out but as always if you have a properly maintained one you're gonna have to grease around the snap ring so just so me and you both can see it we'll get it cleaned up so that uh we can get the snap ring up and she's been greased fairly liberally over the past so it's a good sign for this coming off in an easy yeah it's gonna come off quite easy go grab my snap ring pliers and I'll take that off and I'll uh, show you the replacement process. I'm not sure if you can see because I barely can so I apologize if that's the case. 
Now you pull your snap ring off. There should be a washer here. Then this like adjuster. It just didn't no longer keep the brakes adjusted. None of the above. So we're pulling her off for a new one. And usually you reuse this washer that's on the front side for the next life test. Now what I like to do here is even though you have new parts, always save your old parts. What you always find is usually this back pin is lost. You won't always need this whole thing, but it never hurts to keep this on your truck because like I say, you'll find these pins lost on a regular basis. Key comes out, they were in a hurry, lose something, forget to put the car key in, whatever, and it ends up lost over time. So it never hurts to save the old parts, but since they ordered all new parts, we're gonna install all new. Now what you wanna do is clean your washers up, install your slack adjuster on your splines, and if they're not greased, go ahead and grease, throw a little grease on the slide on a lot easier. Clean everything up, clean off your snap ring so you can actually see it, and we'll put it back in a way that makes more sense where we can both see what's going on. Install your snap ring, get the grease. So that you have no problems. There we go. And you can always push against it to make sure. And if it spins entirely, you're in. You're home. Then, grab your 7 16th wrench. You always want to leave this adjuster loose. So pretty much go back, you know, I done this first. That's the last thing you tie. Leave this loose so you can get this adjusted properly. Just keep this held up till you get it close. And that's close enough. Go ahead and throw your main pin in. Then you can adjust this back up to height after the fact. You got your main pin in where it goes. Go ahead and throw the car key in as well. And while we have the room, I'd like to spin mine sideways. And that is installed. Now, let's get this adjusted back up. Grab the right wrench, 9 sixteenths on this option. See? And you adjust it up. Not too much as usual. Sometimes you just have to cycle it up and down till you get to the right, uh, right opening for you. And as last time, turn it sideways, pull it horizontal, and both installed. Now for the point, we need to adjust our brakes all the way down. of whose preference, how you like to adjust what brakes depending on location. These I adjust a quarter out. So see you tighten it all the way down to your flush. Then you come back and you wait on the S-cam starting to, see the S-cam just now starting to turn. So then I go a quarter turn from that point. That's brake adjustment. Quarter turn. And you can always grab the brake if it's not hot and make sure it's got some movement to it. If it moves a little bit, yes, you're perfectly fine, but you do not want to see an eighth inch gap where you're seeing, you know, a sixteenth at most. So that is brake adjustment, easy as it is. Then you're gonna tighten your adjuster screw and you don't want it to back off. It's a DOT violation. Tighten it like so. Then we're gonna go get the grease gun, grease it. Pretty much your brakes are adjusted. Everything's tight in proper orientation. And I'll grease it, back out the Cajun bolt, and pretty much it's that simple on changing a slack adjuster. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more.